Thank you, Arky, and everyone else on the panel here. Uh, Frank and I will be covering the board. No, I don't need this. Um, first, I'll talk from my perspective. Um, I'm now one of the longest serving members on the board because we are limited to two three-year terms and I'm in my second year of my second term so this is my fifth year on the board um, aside from my passion for the Monroe Institute and its mission it was my background in accounting and finance that had that was responsible for my appointment to the board um, Along those lines, um, let me say let me say this as as far as how I perceive our responsibilities. I mean, I've I've done a lot in the uh, finance end. I've had some special projects that I've worked on, land purchase, um, some issues that we had, and um, uh, due diligence with Monroe Products. Um, but basically. What we're looking at from the board is we are more of a top level view. We're not, res we are not into the day to day operations that go on. Of course, that's Scooter's responsibility as the executive director. And if I may use an analogy, is my, because my background is with the Navy, uh, Scooter's like the captain of the ship. And we decide, or as, as between Scooter and the board and our strategic planning, we decide that the ship needs to get from San Francisco to Honolulu. And it's Scooter's responsibility to do that. She staffs everything. She makes the day-to-day -day decisions, uh, programs, whatnot. And with our, with our guidance and assistance, I, um, I'd say it'd be a navigator, provisioning everything to make sure that that ship makes its way from San Francisco to Honolulu and doesn't end up in New York, for instance. Um, because we're staying focused on the long term. What's wrong with New York? There's nothing wrong with New York. If that's not where we intend to go, we don't want to end up there by accident. <laughs> um, so it's so it's more of an advisory role. Like I said, we're not in, involved in the day-to-day -day decisions, what's going on um, with TMI, but. Um, Along those lines, I would say it's it's more about making sure that um, ten years from now, the next generation, the generation after that, that the the services that you're getting, that we are all getting, are going to be at least the same or better from here on in. And I and I want to tell you, with all the members that we've had on the board and the work we've been doing with Scooter. It's been going real well, and, and I feel really confident that that's where we're headed. And I'll pass it on to Frank. Okay, I agree with everything Fred said, obviously. Um, I'm going to take you through some of the specific things we're working on. So, first of all, uh, Scooter asked me to uh, address some possible misperceptions about what the board does other than what Fred said. And uh, some of those are that the board is not so much interested in the day-to-day -day things, but really wants to maximize this place to make money, to uh, raise funds so uh, we can be more like a corporation. And that is, there's nothing further from the truth. The only reason we want to make money is to keep the lights on. And like Fred said, so in 25 years, there's going to be another room full of people sitting here doing exactly what we're doing today. So it's really important to keep the lights on and for us to create a structure, a solid foundation and structure so that all the great stuff that you all do and the trainers and Scooter and her staff do. That's to me what a good board of directors does. So in terms of strategic planning, which Fred mentioned, that we've been focused on strategic planning, which kind of sounds like corporate boring board stuff. Um, and it is corporate board stuff, but it's not boring. And what good strategic planning is, is first you come up with what your aspirations are, and then you come up with a plan to do it. So aspirations are what we want this place to be in the next three, three to five to 10 years. So some of the ones we've come up with, and it's using feedback from you all, and of course from staff and trainers and everybody else um, recently, are 
marketing, uh, three things are marketing, development, and research. So we now have a marketing function, which we didn't have a couple of years ago, which is kind of hard to believe, a dedicated marketing function. And as somebody mentioned this morning, uh, you, you, somebody mentioned something, you shouldn't have to have a uh, marketing to sell a Mercedes and a BMW. But of course, they have the biggest marketing budgets of anybody. So having a good product isn't good enough. You have to have a very good marketing. Development is raising money. And we need to raise money to keep this place going. And every organization like us needs to do it, especially because we're not a commercial company. We're uh, a nonprofit. So development's very important. And research, I don't have to say that's important. That's what we've been talking about all day or half of what we've been talking about. And we have to continue to put more money and more resources into it. Now, some of the things for the future are facilities is one of them. So the facilities here are not so new anymore. They don't look super modern. Um, we get a lot of comments from people who come here or who don't come here because of the facilities. For example, they might want a private room or they might want a private bathroom, things like that. And we really don't have that to offer right now. So we just recently created a facilities uh, group that's going to start looking at that immediately and decide what the future should be, what it should look like, and that would include building new buildings, probably not so much renovating. Uh, I mean, eventually it might be, but it probably means building new buildings. And inside of that, you have to decide, okay, what do those buildings look like? Do we have single rooms? Do we have double rooms? Do we have some other kind of rooms? Are rooms separate from check units? for example. And what does a check unit look like? Right now, the check units, I think, as far as I know, they're the same as they looked like 30 years ago. But there's so much new tech, and we're going to hear about some of it tomorrow, some of these uh, feedback systems, biofeedback, uh, magic mirrors, and all these other things. Could those be put in a check unit of the future? And should we have wired or wireless? And should we be using headphones or wireless earbuds, and et cetera, et cetera and, and on and on? What we're doing here should reflect the technology that's available in the outside world. So we're going to start planning on that and try to decide what it should be. And of course, your feedback should be critical. And I'm going to try to get done soon because I'd love to hear some feedback on this or questions about it. Um, shifting demographics is another thing at the board level we're looking at. Our average age is kind of 40, 45, and up. And I think we all know that, and we've all seen it happening over the years. So how can we bring in younger people? What programs do we have to have? What facilities? What kind of marketing? And it's, I think that's a tough problem to solve, but we're working on it. The, one of the overarching goals, and this is really coming from Scooter, you heard her say it yesterday, is spreading consciousness globally with the points of light all over the world. So what would a center building on um, Spain and Italy, should we have actual physical facilities there? Should we have dedicated staff there? What would that look like? How much would it cost? What would it mean for us? And we'd like to head there. So we're going to start taking a look at that. Now, a lot of these goals are lofty and possibly expensive. But we now have a development department. And they're kind of looking for use cases for us to say, what should we be raising money for? And it's one thing to say, well, the plumbing in this building needs replacing. It's another to say, we're raising money for a European center. Those, those are two very different messages. So we're looking at things like that. We want to maximize collective e um, efforts with other groups. The, the Global Alliance that Scooter's been putting together, and you've been hearing about that, and, and we all think that's a great idea. We're looking at a new website, and that needs to be done sooner than later. The, you know, we get a lot of uh, feedback on the website, and I, apparently a lot of it's not so good. And there's much more modern methods, things we can do, ways to get um, our programs out, make them easier to understand, ways to uh, work with Monroe products, possibly to download things, streaming instead of CDs and tapes, et cetera, et cetera. And along those lines, we have to decide, and this is, I'll go back to something John said a minute ago, what is our brand? What is the brand we want to project on our website in all of our marketing materials? And I'd love to hear some feedback on this. One of the things we talked about in our, our board meeting the other day is the things we do, out-of-body experiences and altered states of consciousness, all of those things, we could be a lot more straightforward with that. We could own those markets better than we do now, and we tend to not show that so much. And I forget what you said, we're over-editing. Editing. And 
yeah, should we edit or should we really own these markets and in our next website be very literal about what we do? Is that going to scare off people or is it going to attract people that are really looking for us? And we really have to decide that. So those are some of the things we're working on and love to take some questions for anybody on any of it.